See, for roughly about four months of the year, starting from November to March, the whole South Asian region experienced what's called dry season. During the dry season, we see air coming from thousands of kilometers from here, carrying all the pollution from Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, and we see them within a matter of days. So I've been coming to this region for the last 15 years with a team of my students, young scientists, and thanks to the support by National Science Foundation, it is by coming here regularly with these instruments is how we discover the enormous heating effect or global warming due to soot particles. This work had a major impact in the announcement by our Secretary of State Hillary Clinton that one way to get a little bit relief from global warming is to mitigate substances, we call them short-lived climate warming pollutants, by cutting them down. Soot is one of them, methane is the other, ozone. That we can slow down global warming by almost 50% in the next 20, 30 years. It's a very big honor for me to have you here for the purpose of launching the Climate and Clean Air Coalition, our new global effort to fight climate change, protect health, improve agricultural productivity, and strengthen energy security. More than one-third of current global warming is caused by short-lived pollutants. They also destroy millions of tons of crops every year and wreak havoc on people's health. Millions die annually from constantly breathing in black carbon soot that comes from cook stoves in their own homes, from diesel cars and trucks on their roads, from the open burning of agricultural waste in their fields. What really convinced policymakers was seeing this with actual data. And our research pointing out soot is a major climate warming pollutant led to the coalition led by Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. There are still important unanswered questions. What happens when the soot particles enters these clouds. There are certain theories and models suggest the heating by the soot would blow the clouds away and rob the system of the low clouds. And they are very important because they intercept sunlight and cool the climate. There are other theories which suggest they may lead to more clouds. And the reason this issue has not been answered is we have not measured the turbulence in these clouds. Turbulence travels high, brings dry air, and could cause this desiccation or burning off the cloud system. So we are here in the Maldives in February and March of 2012, with back with our drones filled with instruments and these observatories to measure the chemistry of these pollutants how much heating of the air it does. More importantly, what is this soot? What does it do to the clouds when they get in? So we're going to get inside the clouds, make the most careful measurements, and last, the fundamental measurement, which has not been made before with drones, is to measure the turbulence at the same time we are observing these pollutants. And what we are hoping is to come back to our policymakers with this new piece of information. Is the black carbon warming significantly more than what we have assumed it to be? That's the issue we are going after. This has been a presentation of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego.